Hello everyone and welcome to episode 45 of For the Minions, a special Halloween episode. We're going to change things up this week. We're going to do the news and updates, the little bit of news and updates that we had. But uh, after that, we're going to skip all the polls and the Paragon discussion. We're going to kick back this time and just tell some spooky stories from our personal collection, stuff that's uh, happened to us. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And if you have your own spooky story, share it in the description below. I'm your host, The Man Gideon. Joining me, as always, is my bodacious co-host, Mandy Mel. How you doing, Mandy? Evening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well. And I'm so excited because we have one of my favorite ever returning guest hosts, Joycenator, <laughs> a.k.a. Up, Taco Bell. Yeah, <laughs> what's up, guys? So, yeah. uh... Yeah. Mandy, what what your your costume again? I am Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. And Joyce, let's see the bell. So they know. All right. <laughs> let's see it. Yes. More cowbell. <laughs> Use the taco bell. More taco bell. <laughs> right on. So well done. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know Joyce, a little bit of history about your uh your your uh experiences with paragon because it kind of is a little relevant in today's topics yeah it kind of is so um basically i have been playing um since or i played paragon starting in early access um and played all the way up through monolith until about like v42.3 or something like that until i couldn't take it anymore um <laughs> but uh but yeah i've been i've been playing for a long time uh, my favorite stage of the game was monolith pre v42 and um yeah goose and i go go way back to the the early days of monolith so yeah we do that we Feels... do <laughs> been playing together for a while yeah <laughs> not really playing together but it's, we've, we've known each other right talking talking <laughs> yeah. for a good while sharing yeah. clips and stuff so let's uh let's scoot right along into the news and updates uh for omeda studios this week and the reason i was talking about how uh uh, Joyce's experience with the Paragon was relevant is because Omeda Studios Fringe has been doing his streams and he released that he's making a monolith style map. Um, it's kind of alongside the legacy map. So it's not like they're replacing their legacy feel with a new monolith map. It's something that he's just kind of trying out to challenge himself to see if, how he can use the assets. And there was a little bit of talk that maybe you'd be able to choose between the maps. I don't want to put words in their mouth. I don't want to say that that's definitely going to be a thing. That is, of course, something that they would have to test out. But Fringe is working on that Monolith map. So Monolith fans rejoice. There might be some some hope for you guys instead of uh, just all of us old legacy bastards getting what we want. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Mandy, what do you think? What do you think about this, this uh, new update? I like it. I mean, I'm excited either way because I didn't get to play Legacy. So to experience the Legacy map will be, you know, fun for me. Um, but if they do go ahead and add in the monolith as like, that's your option, you can, you know, pick and choose which one you want to want to play on. That would be just nostalgia that I just would be so excited for like that. That's home you know like that's the agora i know and love so i like Joyce, it I'm, I'm sure you've got some uh some some strong feelings about this yeah i mean um i'm gonna be happy regardless like even if we don't get to play on it i'm still gonna be super excited to play um but obviously like for me i loved the feel of monolith i loved how like they had their like little unbalanced lanes to help mm -hmm. kind of like determine role placement and stuff like I, I there was a lot of stuff I really liked about monolith and so I'd be really excited to be able to play that again um, but if they do allow both of them to be playable um, I think that's gonna give people access like a lot of people wanted wanted to be able to do that in Paragon is play on both maps mm -hmm. and so th I think that'd be a really big move for them and I think that'd be you know really exciting for a lot of people who loved both of them yeah it's mm -hmm. something they would have to have a pretty large um uh player base to do though like definitely if you're trying to queue up for two different maps unless you could just queue up for both and then whatever fills up first fills up first or something like that yeah but if I you don't, don't necessarily have a preference i hope it's something they do like i said this isn't i'm not telling you guys that this is what they're doing but uh it is a an option available to them and i really hope that they they take that option and somehow make it work and, um in other omeda news smokey was able to make the mini map work so that is done and in the game so coolio one step closer to that pre-alpha re-release and then uh they are also going to be doing some internal testing again so 
If you do have an alpha key, watch out for some invites. If they do need some people to help them test, uh, that's again, not a guarantee, but I'm certainly going to be um, keeping my eyes glued to Discord, hoping that I, that I can get back in there. Unless I'm going to take somebody else's spot, then I totally don't want to <laughs> do that. But <laughs> cause I've had my shot. But uh, yeah, <laughs> really good stuff all around. It seems like they're uh, they're mo moving forward. Um, they, they really picked up pace. They slowed a, a, a bit down after they took the, the alpha down. I think they just recuperated for a couple months and then they just went back at it extremely hard. So good on them. Any final thoughts for Omega Studios? Mandy, since it's your baby. It is my baby. Um, yeah, I, unlike Goose, uh, will have no mercy. I will be getting into that internal testing if I can. I'm not, I don't care if anybody else hasn't had a chance. No, I, uh, I want everybody to have a chance to see the progress that has been made. Um, and uh, yeah, I... Just want to remind everybody that Discord is the place to to look out for that if you do have that alpha key. Indeed. I, did, I think you said that, but I can't remember if you did or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Joyce, you got any final thoughts on Omeda? Um, I'm putting my fingers crossed for an alpha key. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely really uh, very excited. Um, whether I get to try it out or not right away uh, to see what they've been cooking up and, and what they've been doing with it. Um, sounds like they've been working really hard and I'm very excited. Right on. One way or another. Yeah. Then onward to my baby, Ethereal Clash of Souls. A uh, little bit of news for them. They're going to be participating in Extra Life on November 2nd. So they have a Twitch channel. I haven't been posting that. I didn't know it existed. I'll put that down in the in the description below along with the rest of the links for Ethereal. But uh, they'll, they're going to be just streaming some development, mainly like um, 3D concept art, um, some 3D sculpting and rigging, and they may uh, they may even show some of the skins that they have planned for some of the heroes already. So that should be really fun. We haven't seen anything like that out of Ethereal yet, any kind of live streaming of the development like we have for all the other games. So that'll be uh, really fun to see. And it, it is, of course, for a great cause, the, uh, the Extra Life thing. So that, again, is November 2nd. So what do you guys think? What do you think, uh, Joyce, what do you think about the Extra Life um mainly i'm just really excited for them to get some extra exposure mm -hmm. um you know i feel like that's super super key at this stage in any game's development um is just getting their name out there getting some recognition and exposure um and if there's you know other positives to be had then awesome that's that's really great too um but for the most part like just trying to think like from a business standpoint super excited for them to to get extra exposure and and get their name out there because They've been working really hard on something that looks absolutely beautiful, mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of like chopping at the bit, waiting for it. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. Mandy, anything? Mm -hmm. um, I think this is so incredible that they are participating with Extra Life, and I think they kind of are developing a little bit of a track record of um, uh, like charity like thing because they also did the thing for um, the kitty cat that needed. Mm -hmm. um surgery um they 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 didn't like start the gofundme it was <laughs> yeah. Britic's girlfriend i think it yeah. was her cat but they shared that you know and we're like hey yeah, we're looking out out for our community, community. Yeah. and that that's cool to me i mean that just shows that they are they're they love us they're looking out for us <laughs> I, I was going to cover that on for the minions when they did that because i thought it was such a cool gesture but uh one of the original <laughs> cast members didn't like it at all for didn't whatever like it at all, fucking yeah. reason. But <laughs> <laughs> let's move on now to uh, Made Above. We got nothing for Made Above, nothing for Phoenix Rising. I do want to remind you guys that I will have all the links to all these games, including Made Above and Phoenix Rising, down in the uh, in Visionary, I should say, down in the description below if you want to check them out. And then, um, oh, also before I go, it's probably it's going to be already out by the time this show airs. But Project Stamina did their their live stream on October 30th uh, it should be a video by now. Go check that out. If you were a fan of gigantic or if you're just a fan of quirky third person MOBAs in general, so good stuff for them, but we're going to move on now to the topic for of discussion, which is supernatural stories from our own experiences. And uh, hopefully we have some good ones. Um, I forget what we were going to do for the order, but I think we're going to go Joyce to Mandy, right? And then to me and then back to Joyce. Sounds good to me. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It works Nobody for me. On board? Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know really where to start. I got a few of these. Um, I think 
one of the one of the coolest and like most recent ones that I had was um, this spring I went on vacation to New England. Um, obviously, like a place with a, a lot of rich history and, mm-hmm. and people have been around there doing messed up spooky stuff for a long time. Um, and so one of the nights we spent there was actually in Salem, um, as in like witch trials and everything. Nice. Yeah. And so we saw a lot of cool stuff there. We went to um, like the House of the Seven Gables, like from the Nathaniel Hawthorne book, um, which is really creepy in and of itself um and really cool looking there's like secret passageways all over that thing um yeah it's really messed up but anyway that night we went on a, a ghost tour in in the town of salem and we weren't expecting to see anything it was like a historical tour and then like also people say they see spooky stuff here yeah and uh so we got to the house where nathaniel hawthorne's wife grew up and this is actually the house where nathaniel Haw- hawthorne had his first paranormal experience um that he didn't even talk about to anyone we didn't find out about it until after he was dead in a letter he wrote to a friend oh wow um, yeah i mean like this this messed him up and so we we're standing outside there and it's still owned by his wife's family like even 300 some years later and right now they're doing restoration work on it and it's all stripped down to like the original 1720 clabberts and so, like, for me, I'm a huge architecture guy, so I'm just trying to take pictures of this cool old house. And all of a sudden, I'm, like, looking through my, my camera. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And sure shit, in the third story of this house, I look up, and there's, like, this spectral figure just comes up to the window and is staring right at me and my girlfriend. And I, like, zoom in, and I, like, snap a couple pictures of it. And I'm, like, freaking out. Just and as out we're walking lady. away... <laughs> right? Like, what are you doing, dude? You're dead! <laughs> <laughs> he's got a boner <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's there's two really creepy parts of this story um creepier than the fact that there's like this ghostly figure looking at us right <laughs> yes. so so this house is on lockdown right the only people who have access to it are the renovators and the peabody family themselves so no one can get in no one can get out on, without like special security driven permission um it's also right next to the graveyard where all of the judges and jury members from the Salem witch trials are buried and what? right across the graveyard from the memorial to the victims of the Salem witch trials. Holy shit. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. It gets worse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> As we were walking away, my girlfriend leans over to me and goes, uh, did you see that? And I'm like, oh, you mean this? And I like pull up the pictures of it on my phone. Towards the end of the tour, we find out that that window where it was looking at us is actually a ghost hotspot. People see stuff in that window all the time. And one of the most credible like images ever captured of a paranormal event happening in the city of Salem was a guy who got a 10 second clip seeing that exact phenomenon happen a couple of years earlier. Wow. Wow. We didn't find that out till later. Yeah. Yeah. Holy smokes. Well, that's yeah, a good I got... vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. Oh, it was it was definitely one of the highlights of the trip. Um and I got pick, you know, I got the pictures. I can put them on Discord or something later if you guys want. Oh, but... right on, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. I definitely want to see those pictures. If you can send <laughs> yes. it to me on time, not... I'll put them up in the uh, background. Yeah, yes. not 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 good pictures, but but I I did get kind of kind of pictures. You can kind of kind of make stuff out. Really, really crappy pictures because I'm zoomed way in and it's kind of dark yeah. out. But right. yeah, yeah, I got a, a couple pictures of it. You can kind of see it. Not for a while, it was like crystal clear, like this, like creepy looking, like dog kind of face thing sitting in the window staring at us. Um, I didn't get quite really good pictures of that, but but yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Well, that man. is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Mandy, uh, you got to follow up on that one. <laughs> and this is awful because mine is like it's pretty short and I mean not really sweet but uh I'll just get right into it so um this happened to me back when I lived I still lived with my parents and um uh I don't even remember how old I was but um the computer used to be set up in my parents room so they could like monitor you know what we're doing and everything like that um and they had the way it was set up um if you're facing the camera their bed was behind you directly behind you and they had um this like old bed 
frame from like the 70s that was like falling apart it was like very like if you the the bed frame would start to like go like this it had posts on it and so you had to kind of like pull on the bed posts to get it to like straighten back out it was it was terrible and every time you pulled on the bed poster if you like bumped into it or anything like that you would hear a very distinctive squeak like it was just it would always squeak it was just a thing it did so um I was home alone, of course, as one always is when creepy <laughs> shit happens. Uh, I was home alone and I was on the computer and um, I heard one squeak, just one little squeak. And I was like, all right. And so I kind of turn around and I'm like, I don't know, maybe I just, I don't know. So, and we don't have like pets or anything in the house. So it's not like anything bumped up against it. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm just, you know, whatever on the computer. And then I hear like, squeak, squeak, squeak. And I'm like, all right. And so I like <laughs> turn around again and uh, nothing. There's nothing there. There's nobody home. Um, and then I'm like, do, what, do I leave? Like, what do I do? And I'm like, no, it's just you're being silly, whatever. And then I start hearing squeak, 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 squeak. Like, it's just squeaking very... I mean, clear as day. There's no way I'm mistaking it. It's happening over and over again. And I like turn around real fast and it stops. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. And so I just like, I leave the computer going and I just leave. I'm home alone. I don't know what to do. I just like go outside and do things outside. And this is like, you know, no, I wasn't, I wasn't into it. Um, and so I never told this story to my sister, uh, who is Dara Not Gamey, who is probably in the uh, chat right now. I never told her this story while we still lived there because she was, she's very, very afraid of like shit like that. She mm -hmm. would, you know, she's very afraid of it. So I never told her this story. Um, and then I don't know why I decided to tell the story years later. And she was like, no way i swear when i was in that bed one time because we would also watch tv in there when we were a lot younger um um and she was like i swear i was in there and i just felt the sheets like someone jerked the sheets like she was laying on the bed watching tv and she's like someone just jerked the sheets and she was like i was done i was out of there <laughs> like <laughs> So, yeah, and then that was it. There was never anything else. Um Wow. But as kind of a eh, follow up, I guess, when I turned 17, um, a friend of mine took me to St. Augustine here in Florida, which is one of the most, you know, notoriously haunted places. And we went on a ghost tour and they told us, I don't know if they just tell you this to scare you or not, but they say um, if you've ever had a near death experience, you're more likely to have things follow you, bond to you, whatever. Oh, of really? Story. Yeah. And so when I was actually, when my mom was in labor with me, um, she had a kind of a troublesome labor and they had to do an emergency C-section because my heartbeat would just keep dropping and everything like that. So I don't know if that really counts as a near-death experience, but I was like, maybe, you know, <laughs> and just because I love this kind of stuff, I'm like grasping at straws, like this is what it is. This is what's <laughs> happening. So, so there it is. There's my supernatural experience. All right, so we've got a peeping Tom ghost and a squeaky bed ghost. <laughs> and Ghosts a squeaky, are horny yeah. as fuck. Maybe <laughs> they know each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess that brings me to my story. Uh, before I start this story, a couple things you should know. Uh, this is a story about the curse of Devil's Hollow. That's where I grew up, and uh, which is it's Devil's Hollow, but in West Virginia you just say Devil's Hollow. But um, first thing, my brother and my uncle are the same age. I know that's a little weird, but it is relevant to the story. Um, the other thing is, the curse story, I think, was made up. I'm not a superstitious person at all, but yeah, I think this whole curse story was made up. But I'll tell you the story that I heard uh, as far as the curse goes. It was a um, Native American man worked for an Englishman, um, actually in Pennsylvania. And um, he was actually really good at his job. He had a head for numbers, and he, he worked for a merchant. Um, but he ended up catching the eye of the merchant's daughter and... Uh, ended up asking for her hand in marriage, you know, formally asked the, uh, the merchant, the merchant's like, hell no, not having that shit. Um, fired him and then, you know, put it out around town that he was not to be hired by anyone else. Essentially ran him out of town. 
So he left town. Um, he actually went, got a new job, got some money, came back, um, eloped with the girl. She came with him, and they, uh, they ended up settling down in Devil's Hollow. And uh, the people there uh, didn't really like it too much because they settled down, they got married, and they had three children. Um, and, you know, people are racist as fuck, and they didn't care for the whole interracial Native American and English woman uh, relationship that was going on. So the, uh, the, all the while, the merchant father had, you know, put out, was putting out information trying to find his daughter and, uh, you know, saying that this man kidnapped his daughter and stuff. So when news finally reached that community and they realized that that's who it was, they, uh, they formed up in a group. And of course, you know, mob rules, you know, how people think, um, they ended up, uh, killing the three, uh, the three children first, hanging them and then hanging the, the, the man last, which, uh, and, and, you know, um, rescuing the, uh, the wife, but that's just seems particularly harsh to me that you would hang the children before him. But, uh, the, as the story goes, he put a curse on the entire area saying that every third generation, um, the curse would come and take three children from that community, which is the community I grew up in. Um, so there's the curse story. So I'm going to tell you now the uh, when the deaths started happening in, in our community. And uh, I'm not going to use people's real names. This stuff really did happen, but I'm not going to use people's real names because uh, these guys were friends of mine. But um, And I don't want people like looking up their family and trying to find stuff out. So we'll, ju we'll just say Bob for the first one. Um, my, my uncle um, and Bob were at this place called Running Bear Pond, which was... It was really just a sinkhole that was filled with water, like a very, very deep sinkhole. sinkhole. It wasn't very far across, but it was extremely deep, and it was known to have pockets of very cold water bubbling up from, from, from below. And My dumbass Uncle Mike and Bob um, were challenging each other to swim across Running Bear, and they had both done it once, and they were going back to try and do it again, um, my uncle made it across. Bob did not. Um, he started, you know, thrashing around. My uncle tried to swim out and get him, but he was already tired from swimming across the pond pretty much twice. And uh, so, so Bob, uh, Bob drowned. Um, took them days and days to find his body. Apparently, there's school buses and several cars and all kinds of shit at the bottom of Running Bear Pond, which I did not know about. But um, so that was the first one. Um, and then the second one was. Uh, a uh, very close friend of mine, uh, we'll call him Danny. Um, we took Taekwondo lessons together in the in the local local library basement. <laughs> but uh, uh, Danny, uh, in, unfortunately, uh, in a in a farming accident, uh, lost his life. And um, so, and and Danny and Bob were both the same age, uh, which is the same age as my uncle and my brother. And that's when this whole curse story started floating around. And that's why I think it was made up. I think people made it up because just to deal with all of that. And I had lived there for a long time and never heard this story. It didn't come out until kids started dying of the same age in the same area. But anyway, my brother was freaked the fuck out once this curse story started up because there was supposed to be a third. There was going to be a third child. He was the same age. He lived in the same area. I don't know if my uncle was afraid at all, but because, um, you know, he just didn't bring <laughs> that situation up to him. But, uh, yeah, that it was going around all the kids in the area. I wasn't all that afraid because I just wasn't that age. I did believe it at the time. I don't now. But, yeah, my brother was very scared. But we ended up finding out that a month before uh, Bob died, the one who drowned, uh, there was a girl that we didn't even know who was home. She was a uh, homeschool in a Mormon family that lived a little bit further down the hollow that uh, had died of pneumonia. Her parents didn't want to take her to the hospital for religious reasons. So that was... So that would make, uh, uh, what I call him, Danny, that would make Danny the third person in the curse story to die. So oh, that is the curse God. of Devil's Hollow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the, 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 like I said, those are real people, uh, really great dudes. I mean, I barely remember them because I was, I was very small, but uh, yeah. That's intense. Shit. That's, yeah. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Wow. Oh, no. Yeah. Once that, once that, we found out that uh, that third girl died. Like everybody's like, oh, it's like no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, terrible. Don't believe it. Jeez, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> that's not a sigh of relief. <laughs> oh. 
Wow. I don't know if oh. I, I don't know if I just killed the mood or intensified the mood. <laughs> that's that's like intense as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Wow. Uh, well, I think that kind of makes up my mind for me. I'm I'm going to go with something a uh, a little bit lighter um cuz nothing bad ended up actually happening. Um but it is still pretty creepy. So um the house that I grew up in um was like a hundred some year old farmhouse and when i was about like seven years old or so i had four imaginary friends and they were all like prepubescent to about like early teenage american indian kids um and they weren't and 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 this is only weird to me now looking back Uh, they weren't allowed to leave the property and they were afraid to go inside the house. Like they refused to, they could, but they refused to. And I saw a lot of weird shit in that house. I could probably go on for a couple hours about everything that happened in that house. But the thing that freaked me out probably more than anything else is, uh, in the basement, there was two parts of it. So one was original to the house. Um, and then the other one, because it was so old, it didn't have a bathroom. You know, it's, it's, northern wisconsin like a hundred years ago they didn't have you know toilets and bathrooms there um so eventually at some point they had added on a bathroom and when they did that they added on to the basement as well and every time you would go from one part of the basement to the other the temperature would change and right in the threshold of that doorway i would always feel someone like breathing on my neck every time i went down there because that's where we kept like our canned goods and like you know sodas and stuff that we weren't keeping in the fridge and so every time i had to go down there for food or something um i would feel like this like a like a you know like when uh someone's like almost touching you but they're not like all over my back and then like (laughs) cold breath like down my neck (laughs) and so i get spooked and this one time um i mean this happened more than once but this was around the same time like like when i was seven probably the first time it happened so I decided I was just because normally I would just run right up the stairs and I decided being stupid. I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm a dumb kid. I'm just going to walk up the stairs like normal and something grabbed me by the ankle and yoinked me down the stairs and like literally dragged me down back into the basement. And I like no respect and it didn't like it. <laughs> no, no. Apparently he wanted me to run. Um, yeah. And it, it dragged me down into the basement. Um, probably the scariest part of this story is because I moved out of that house when I was 10. I lived there from like just before I turned six to um, I was about 10 and a half. And two of my brothers actually ended up moving back into that house. And so I asked them a couple months ago and one of my brothers is like, yeah, like I still hear footsteps upstairs, even though like no one's home and like, I'll still see shadows, even though nothing's casting it. And like, yeah, there's like a whole ton of weird shit still going on in that house um, to this day. And and whatever it was, didn't like that I didn't want to run away from it and try to be back down into the basement. You got to show that ghost some respect. <laughs> I do. I do now. <laughs> do you know any history on the house as to like what the, you know? Um, I know it was clear cut by loggers during the 1800s um the town nearby was a logging camp during the 1800s at some point oh. uh, the house went up not too terribly long after that and that's really all i know about the, the history's property um okay. but we ended up building another house on that property and moved in there so like obviously that house couldn't be haunted but weird shit still kept happening um so i think you know if whatever it is is probably more more the property than anything else oh Um, that but but there is something about that house and it's not not pleasant Yeah, I, I thought you said you were going a little lighter. That was that was not light. <laughs> or terrifying. Well, I mean, nothing bad actually happened. It just pulled me out and pulled my feet out from under me and said, <laughs> "No, try it. Try again, bud." Yeah, right. <laughs> Fleet in terror this time. That's what I want. <laughs> you got to think though. Like, I mean, we didn't really go down there besides like 
laundry or to restock our pantry yeah. from like the, the extra pantry in the basement. So you had to get bored down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> my, my dogs didn't like the basement. My, my mom's cat didn't like the basement. We kept her litter box down there and she like wouldn't use it. And Ooh. yeah, that's, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Anytime yeah. animals like think like if they stare off into space, like they see something, you know, I'm like, mm -mm, oh, hell no. I ain't trying to play around <laughs> with that stuff because like, yep. I don't know. There's there's something about animals. For me, it's little things. kids. Yeah, little kids yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because yeah, like, they don't know about all this shit. They got no reason to make yeah. that up. <laughs> they don't really have a concept of like lying or, you know. Yeah. To, right. To... Wow. Good one. Ooh. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think that's about all we have time for is just a couple of a couple of stories. Um, I hope you guys had a, had fun. I know I certainly had fun. I love I love telling scary stories, but uh, yeah. let's, let's move it along to plugs. Uh, Joyce, you got anything to plug? Yeah, I mean, uh, I still have my YouTube channel. We're about to hit 6000 subscribers. We're around like that 70 or uh, 57 to 5800 mark right now. Nice. I've also been streaming on Twitch full time this last month and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've switched over to their made affiliate, uh, twitch.tv slash joycenator. Um, I'd really appreciate um, any follows. We're doing a giveaway at 250 followers. So um, wow. sooner we hit that, the the better, the better, sooner I can give out some, some money. So. Wow. Right on, man. Good to hear. Good to hear. And I can uh, testify that Joyce giveaways are no joke because my husband won one. He got a $10 PlayStation yeah. uh gift card from from a giveaway so. i did not know that nice yeah <laughs> yeah um i'll i'll plug my uh my twitch i haven't been streaming too often uh i'm sorry i'm kind of just taking a step back for a little while but i will still go ahead and plug it because um i'm not going anywhere i'm still gonna <laughs> gonna be uh streaming so come on out and say hi um by the time this airs, I guess there's no, yeah, by the time this airs, I'm going to do a birthday stream. So, which my birthday, hey. yeah. So, <laughs> nice. um, if you guys, but I'll, I'll plug all that on like my discord and everything. So hopefully you guys will have come out to my birthday stream. <laughs> right on. <laughs> uh, I ain't got nothing to plug. Um, <laughs> Really happy uh, happy for everybody that came out. And like I said, if you do have a uh, spooky story of your own, please leave it in the comments below and share it. Um, I will be more than happy to read them. I am so sorry. Speaking of spooky, scary Speaking. stuff. <laughs> oh, that was, your cat has excellent timing. Oh, my God. Hopefully it still works. Oh, shit. Well, I can hear you. Okay, that's good. Sorry, let me grab that. Oh, my God. This is going to be the For the that Minions was... crew signing off. You guys have a good one. <laughs> Mango.